Hello and uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Mukmohit Singh and today we are going to talk on a very important topic that is COVID cases and uh, understanding the numbers. Well, I've got a couple of queries from almost everyone that uh, in India probably the numbers are uh, slowly increasing. Are we safe? Are we not safe? In US, you should say safe because the numbers are rampantly increasing. And Italy, of course, we had seen, uh, unfortunately, we had seen a very high number of cases and staggering number of uh, deaths and uh, case fatality rates. So what is these numbers? Are we actually safe or not? I'm going to talk a little bit upon interpreting these numbers on or how do we understand these num numbers. So let me first talk about these global scenarios. And uh, today, 31st of March 2020, we stand at something around 850,000 cases across the globe, 846, 281 cases across the globe with 41,000 deaths. And probably as I speak to you, the numbers might have increased. They must have been like 42,000 deaths, maybe. I don't know. And uh, the new cases that we saw on 31st of March from 30th till 31st of March was 61,000. 622 cases. So I know you must be very much aware about the number of cases, about everyone, how every country is being reporting and everyone is seeing about the WHO data as well. So I'm just here to talk with you for 15 minutes about how to interpret these numbers, what is the game behind these numbers. So uh, these are all my personal thoughts. What I did was I took the total number of cases, that is 61,000 cases, I found out which country was contributing to these cases. So I understood that the countries like US, France, Spain and Germany, they had contributed approximately 60%, 57 to 60% of the total cases in the world today were major contributors were US, France, Spain and Germany. Italy, I would like to stress upon this that Italy is one country which was reporting a fairly good high number of cases. Um, uh, and on 31st of March, it slightly came down. And the point of concern is that Spain has gone up as a, as a bigger contributor compared to Italy in terms of the quantum of the total cases that the world gets out of them who's contributing more. Uh, Italy is there, but Italy is in the lower red transition zone. That means, what do I mean by the lower, lower red transition zone? That means they are just coming out of that phase of that major contributors either people are in early phase and then they are going to the peak or they must be towards that down phase so this red transition zone is actually once you are not in the peak so this is the red transition zone that means you're not facing the peak either you fail phase or you have phase so the major contributors are these countries so let's understand a little bit more on this if you see this uh, chart from WHO, uh, this is the chart uh, situation report number 71, I think, and launched on uh, 31st of March 2020. It clearly shows the number of cases are more from US and from Europe. These are the two big time epicenters now. It definitely does not mean that Asia is, a, is, is on, a, on a safer side, but of course, we all know about the community level of transi uh, transmission which is going on and uh, only thing is we are not having the big numbers as far as the current date is concerned. But of course, testing could be a possible uh, reason behind that. All said and done, we have to be strong and face this peak. It's not a matter of, of if the peak will come or not. The matter is when the peak will come. So more than the cases, I'm going to talk about the fatality rates right now. If you talk about CFR, what is CFR? CFR is case fatality rate. CFR is nothing but a case fatality rate. It is given by the formula total number of deaths due to a particular disease. Could be TB, could be COVID, could be SARS, could be pneumonia, could be anything, malaria, could be anything. Divided by the total number of cases and multiplied by 100, it's usually of course expressed as per 100 percentage. So the case fatality rate, if you see from uh, the data which is available, we see that Italy has a very high amount of 11 to 12 percent case fatality rate. Germany, on the other hand, has 0.9 percent of the case fatality rate. The global case fatality rate is, is somewhere exactly in the median point that is 5 percent case fatality rate. SARS had a 
six to seven percent case fatality rate. Ebola infection had a forty percent case fatality rate. Influenza or the normal flu or the common cold that we know all know has around one percent to two percent max to two percent. It usually has less than one percent case fatality rate. The COVID 2019 was initially reported from China from Wuhan, and uh, the initial preliminary research data also showed us around two to three percent case fatality rate. So what's happening now? Do we really do not know, or are there certainly some variations? Let's have a look at them. If you talk about the total number of cases from across the globe, you can see that the maximum cases are as expected because the peak is towards uh, the epicenter is towards currently in the Europe and in the United States. We see that the main uh, deaths are happening in these areas, but of course, nevertheless, we already had seen a couple of uh, unfortunate events or terrible events in China as well about the deaths and uh, uh, just to keep the fingers crossed about the second wave or something like that. But uh, current scenario is that deaths maximum are happening in Europe. Let's move forward. You see that some of the deaths, this uh, chart that you're seeing on the screen right now has been taken from worldometers.info and credits goes to our world data dot uh, org and the source of all this information is cdc dated 30th march 2020 you see that the total number of deaths in the european country like spain and italy is a reasonable number of deaths on the other hand you also see that uh, the first world countries like the united kingdom the united states germany they also have a, a death rate which is slightly low nearby but it is far away from spain and italy is it really and iran as well you can see there is it really that these countries can save people or is it really that italy or spain had some unfortunate event let's go into it let's go deeper into it why is there variations in the case fatality rate i believe this is my personal phenomenon this is my personal understanding from my experience that i found out that case fatality rate actually depends on four phenomena either your numerator effects or the denominator effects or we can have healthcare system capacity or scarcity differences or we can have spatial and temporal difference in time terms of the epidemic curve what do we mean by all this let me take the easy one first that is about the spatial and the temporal location of the country in an epidemic curve what do i mean by this see when a country enters into an epidemic phase when the country starts getting in the epidemic what we happen to see is not the deaths we happen to see the cases once the cases build up build up build up build up the health system is still uh, functioning it, it usually can take care of if it's functioning at 90 80% capacity it may function up till 180 200% capacity so people are being saved in that zone in that early part of your epidemic curve you usually tend to see a lower case fatality rates but when your health system starts being overwhelmed when it starts overflowing when the quantum of cases comes in not hundreds but they come in thousands and unfortunately hundred thousands then you tend to see a higher death rate but then when the country moves off the peak, what is going to happen? The cases start coming back, but the deaths may keep on happening as you are seeing in Italy right now. Because of this, because of this lag kind of thing that the cases would stop coming because of social distancing or other efforts or per se, that's how the behavior of the epidemic is. But the deaths will keep on happening because those were those people who were diagnosed with the cases maybe 15 to 17 days back. The median time from onset of disease, that is the symptomatic point till the point of death, that's roughly around 16, 17 days, right? So you were diagnosed, the patients were diagnosed 16, 17 days prior. So there's a lag phase of that 16, 20 days. During that phase, the cases decrease, the deaths increase. That may lead to a higher CFR. So basically, I want to tell you that uh, the case fatality rate may be dependent on the point where the country is in that epidemic curve. Let's come to the slightly more complex ones. And not complex, it's fairly easy to understand uh, about the denominator. What was the denominator? We just now saw that it is the total number of deaths divided by the cases multiplied by 100. So how can I change the denominator? See, try to understand that any country will define a case 
as when when do why do we say confirmed cases we say confirmed cases because the real number of cases are far more than the confirmed cases so if you talk about the denominator effects let us say a country is doing a lot of testing so if you're doing mandatory testing for almost everyone every individual in your area is green what are you going to do you're trying to swell up the denominator the denominator increases in size obvious understanding from your class grade 4 mathematics i think if the denominator increases the case fatality rate tends to decrease so it all depends on the testing as well it also depends on another phenomena which is related to testing that because of your testing you tend to catch people in the natural course of history natural course of disease you tend to catch people pretty early if you catch these people early you are going to increase again the number of people the number of fatalities the deaths by the survivors is going to decrease so increase testing or you detect the disease early in stage early in stage in both the scenarios you're going to decline the case fatality rates so that may be the case that we are seeing with one of the beautiful countries and beautiful people up there in germany where they have done intensive testing south korea where they are doing so much of testing that uh, almost virtually you can say almost all the people are being tested so that swells up your denominator and the case fatality rate decrease it does not mean it may be of course uh, the health capacity is pretty good in germany but all said and done predominantly i would say that because you're testing you are decreasing your case fatality rate so the numbers would probably change what about the numerator effect see what happens in what is the numerator and case fatality rate it is the number of deaths what happens is sometimes when the disease is in a, when the epidemic is in a very early stage what what do you think will happen what happens is that nobody in the country knows that uh, the the case is spreading for example in wuhan from hubei province in uh, in china when the when the disease started at a very early stage do you think the people or the doctor or the physicians they came that wow we've got a case of uh, covid 19 case or novel ncov virus it was not known so what happens is when the epidemic spreads many deaths happen there are chances many deaths happen due to suspected covid cases which was not labeled at that time and the deaths keep on happening later on when the data is collected there are chances that the, de the deaths were not encountered for the deaths were not accounted for the cases were accounted so that you tend to squeeze in the numerator so your numerator is virtually lower than the real numerator because some of the deaths might be happening uh, due to COVID, which were not reported as COVID deaths. So there are chances where the numerator can be squeezed. That is typically in cases in the early part so of an epidemic. So that's the probably the reason where we can say that uh, China has reported a 4% case fatality rate. But all said and done, these are small effects, numerator effects won't have very drastic change. But the drastically affecting is actually the denominator effects and the spatial temporal location of a country in the epidemic curve. Third, of course, is uh, related to the epidemic curve. It all tells you about the capacity of a country to protect the individuals. That I think is imperative to understand that the first world, the developed countries per se, might have a more number of ventilators per million populations, more number of ICU beds per thousand population. They might be having more number of intensivists or anesthesiologists or, or physicians or pulmonologists per uh, thousand or per million population. So basically, the healthcare system scarcity or capacity may also determine the case fatality rates. And that's the reason uh, uh, the World Health Organization and uh, almost everyone in the globe from public health, they are more bothered towards uh, the chances of people to survive or to or to have mortality, specifically in developing countries or underdeveloped countries or in countries with very high density population and low health resources or scarce of the health resources, resources coupled with the problem of malnutrition coupled with the problem of poverty and other things. 
So these are the things which vary the uh, case fatality rates. And uh, whenever you're watching a country that so many people are dying, it is, it, it's very good that you understand that Italy has undergone very high number of deaths. People are still dying in Italy. Why is it happening? So every time I get a question, every time I'm, I'm urged to talk to you that, uh, that uh, it's not about the absolute numbers. You have to see everything in relativity, in relation to other countries or in relation to time, place and person. That's what is basic epidemiological science with us. So if we just see this uh, data, uh, this is another chart that I had taken from uh, one of the reputed uh, online uh, data provider agencies. And uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty around the COVID death toll in the United States in this year, 2020. So as you can see that most of the researchers, they are estimating the death toll to be around 200,000. I think you must have heard about the report as well, that the numbers, the data shows that there could be anywhere between 100,000 to 200,000 or even more deaths. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and uh, I, w I just wish and I just pray that we all cruise through these tough times uh, very fast and uh, please stay indoors. Do not go outside until and unless it's a matter of life and death because uh, uh, do not talk of these numbers in a light manner. These numbers are serious and once they escalate to bigger numbers, they can escalate to a much bigger problem that we all can even imagine. We already have seen the economic impact and the health impact that we are facing right now with COVID-19. So stay safe, keep your hands clean, stay indoors. Thank you so much.